Well, I'm here with writer and filmmaker Matt Dickinson. Hi, it's nice to meet you, Matt. Hi. Um, you've just been telling us about your experience on Everest. So what was the whole experience like and what sort of challenges did you face filming up there? Uh, well, filming on Everest was the greatest uh, technical challenge of my life. It was also a big personal adventure to go there. And it was always my dream to go to Mount Everest ever since I was a kid. So it was an incredible thing to do. Obviously, the cold is intense. It could be about 50 or 70 degrees below freezing. So you had to handle the gear and you had to handle yourself. It's a very, very challenging place to work in. Hmm. And what sort of training did you do before you went up? We had about two months to go and do some training, which wasn't really enough. So we actually, you know, we were definitely struggling a bit on the fitness levels because you obviously do need to be very, very fit. But at the same time, you know, we had a lot of time when we were actually in the environment to actually try and get a bit fitter and to, to get our, um, our personal levels of strength up. So that was important as well. And how did you prefer as a filmmaker? Well, we had to test our gear. So we took the gear to Scandinavia, to above the Arctic Circle, and tested it in minus 40 degrees. And we actually left the cameras out in the cold overnight, which was like a really savage thing to do, to see what would happen. And they survived. And they actually turned on the next morning and shot. The biggest problem, if you're interested in the technical thing, is the condensation inside the lens. If you get condensation in that type of situation and it freezes, you cannot shoot. That's it. Game over. So you have to be very careful the way you handle the gear. Hmm. And uh, obviously, you're an adventurer and a filmmaker. How did you manage to get into the media side, the media industry? Uh, I got into the media industry by just sheer persistence. Like, you know, I really wanted to work in TV. And I wrote to a lot of people. And I met a lot of people. And I started networking. And I, I was always quite good at making contacts with people. I just worked really hard and unpaid for quite a long time, like about six months. And then I started to get some breaks. What sort of tips would you give people in the school for getting into the media industry? Uh, the tips I give you would, would be the similar tips I gave you in the talk, which would be find something that you're passionate about yourself, look to specialize in that thing, uh, be persistent, get out there, and get started. If you want to be a filmmaker, make shorts. If you want to be a journalist, get a blog up and running and write a blog every single week or month. If you want to be um, a journalist, look for news articles that you can rewrite and you know, put, a, put those on, on your, your blog site. That's the type of way to get started, I think. And you've also written some fictional books with your new book, The Everest Files. Um, how much of this is inspired by your own life? Yeah, uh, like most fiction writers, a lot of what I write about is things that I've seen and people that I've seen have found their way into the, the stories that I've written. A lot of the characters in my books would be recognizable to people that I've worked with or people that I know. So I think real life definitely comes into fiction a lot. And, th and that's one of the reasons why people that write fiction tend to be a little bit older, don't they? they you know, like filmmakers are often in their 20s and 30s, but people that write fiction often tend to be in their, in their 40s or even older. And I think it's because you need that level of life experience in order to be able to write convincingly about things, perhaps. And uh, finally, after looking around the new school, what are your sort of impressions of this? I wish I'd come to this school. I mean, it's exactly the school I would have wanted to come to, precisely exactly the school I would have, would have liked to have been at when I was your age. So you're very lucky. Well, thank you very much. It's been great to talk to you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I, did I ever feel like I was going to die? Yes, I did. It's a good question, isn't it? Because uh, at one point, I, I definitely did feel as though my life was in the balance. In fact, I felt as though my life was really in the balance of the whole of the summit day, which is the final day. And that was a really extreme day. And I definitely felt at least two or three times on that day, if I mess up now, then, then I can die, like instant type of, I'm going to fall off this thing. So a lot of moments where I thought, my goodness, the level of concentration and like, the level of commitment that I'm, I'm bringing into this is, is really serious. You know, there's no doubt. When you start to step over the dead bodies on your way to the top, and there's about 150 of those dead bodies, you know, you kind of start to feel, you know, we are in a place that's absolutely dangerous. You know, you twist an ankle, you could probably die. If you drop your ice axe, you may well die. So that's the type of thing you're dealing with. It's like a really high pressure, a very tense place to be. You can't make a mistake. I think the biggest challenge on Everest is really, the biggest challenge is, is dealing, how to deal with things when nothing's happening. It's a really weird thing to say, but like the downtime is really hard. A lot of people can't cope with so much downtime because there's so, many th so much time when you need to spend days or even weeks at base camp with not much happening. So that tends to be a problem for a lot of people. So you need to be very, very patient and capable of, of having a, a situation where the game can change, the plan can change almost every day. So it's, it's a place where a lot of people get really, really stressed because they can't cope with the fact that the plan keeps getting changed. And that's the nature of the place.